Let's move to uh, some foreign policy issues. Start with Ukraine. Has President Obama done enough, along with the EU, to uh, dissuade uh, Putin from going further? As I've appreciated uh, the president's calibrated approach to what's happening now in Crimea. I've said repeatedly that I do not anticipate, nor would I support, any direct U.S. military involvement in what's happening. There doesn't rise to that level of an imminent national security threat to our country or to our citizens uh, here or abroad. But there are tools that he is utilizing, and it's on a graduated uh, pace, depending on how far Putin wants to push this, from diplomatic to economic tools. And the more he ramps up, the more we'll have the ability to. But we can't do this alone. So there has to be uh, international consensus and cooperation uh, in doing it. And you know, Putin, I think, is playing a very dangerous game. If his goal was further global integration of the Russian economy, this is the wrong way to do it. It's only furthering the isolation of his, his country and the economic future there. You know, 85 percent of their economy is natural resource based. They got to export. And if they want to ruin the Western European market, this is the perfect way to do it because they're going to go to other sources. But my sense is the Europeans aren't as um, interested in tougher sanctions as we might be, the Germans in particular. So what do we do if we have partners that are sort of go along to get along? Yeah, you, you love allies when they're with you, and they can be problematic when they're, when they're not always with you. But this is something we've got to work through. Obviously, this is a very dangerous precedent that he's establishing right now. He's going outside the parameters of international law. And the response from the international community is going to matter uh, significantly. There are voices uh, within Russia right now uh, trying to find an exit ramp uh, to all of this mm -hmm. so that they don't increase their own uh, economic isolation. And diplomatic now with the UN Security Council vote. They were left alone uh, in all that. So it is a dangerous game. Uh, there are obviously historic and cultural connections uh, in that region that we need to be sensitive about. But He's going about it all the wrong way. Instead of opening up channels of dialogue with the Ukrainian government, he's, he's gone off he, on his own. Do you think he cares? Well, I don't know. That's the, does he care that's about the, the European big question. Or, or, you know, the president's opinion? Or I think he, he does. does. Do what he wants to do. Otherwise, what was that display in Sochi that we just witnessed? Mm -hmm. He was really trying to do best foot forward with the, this is their coming out party, so to mm -hmm. speak. So I think they're sensitive to that. He is. But what does he really care about is really the question. You know, where are the pressure points with him? And that's yet to be defined, I think. So how tough do you think the U.S. can be on, say, Gazprom when ExxonMobil and other large U.S. corporations have ties? That, I mean, we're, there's so much interrelated activity now in the global economy. How tough can we really be? Well, I think it's the same question Putin needs to be asking himself, is how radical can he be without jeopardizing a lot of these uh, these connections. Already, the Russian market's been taking a hit and uh, will continue to uh, in the future as he uh, continues to escalate over there. So it's really a two-way street here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's going to be sensitivity on both sides uh, going forward. But I, mean, I think the president, I think, has been taking a very pragmatic, reasonable approach given the options that are available and, and recognizing our own limitations and the limitations of some of our allies, too, that we need to to keep on board with all of this. But I listen very closely to those who are critical because I want to hear constructive proposals and solutions too, and I'm not hearing a lot of that these days. You got this chorus of critical voices, but no plan B. If you got a better idea, let's hear it. But just criticizing him for not punching Putin in the nose, uh, I don't think is a very reasonable alternative. Well, well the, the Republicans, some of them, uh, Lindsey Graham, for example, McCain, have said, it's not just Ukraine, it's uh, with President Obama. It's a series of actions he has or has not taken, starting, they bring up Benghazi, they bring up Syria, and it's led uh, Putin to believe that he's weak. Mm. What do you make of that criticism? Well, again, what, what would they have us do? You know, if it was President McCain today, not Senator McCain, we'd probably have troops in Libya on the ground. We'd probably have troops in Syria on the ground. We'd probably be doing flyovers Crimea right now. Mm -hmm. I think the president's reading the American people correctly. After two very long, very costly wars, in both lives and treasure, American people do not have the stomach for another military engagement. And the president recognizes. We've had two elections, basically, national elections on that issue in this country. So 
Yeah, some of the senators can rattle the sabers and sound tough, but I think they're disconnected from where most of the country is uh, today. And that's why the president's uh, exhausting all these other options right now. As that plays out, Congressman, and I guess we don't know how it'll play out, but is there any potential impact on the American economy from Crimea? Well, I tell you, I was working long and hard with our USTR reps to get Russia to open up the dairy export market for us. They've had a shutout since 2010. We were making progress on that front, but now mm -hmm. talks have ceased, which obviously has an economic impact mm -hmm. uh, back home here. And there are a variety of other uh, trade measures that now that Russia's in WTO, they've got a higher obligation and so, different so rules. Potentially, that they um, if those talks had continued, Wisconsin milk might have ended up on the. Yeah, we were getting close to being able to get greater market access for our dairy products, and because um, it is, I think, a, a growing market over there. We ought to be there competing uh, with others, and uh, because of some. Uh, uh, vital sanitary excuses that they were using that weren't scientifically based. They were effectively shutting out our product in, in the market. Not too unlike what Canada is trying to do right now with our dairy exports to the, to the north of us. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, uh, when it comes to the global marketplace, we're certainly more in integrated than ever before. So there's going to be ripple effects mm -hmm. to what's happening.